A Canadian university think they found a diabetes cure, how one hospital is beginning to battle diabetes burnout, and Amazon begins delivering insulin to people's doors. All that and more coming up in today's video. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Lowe and welcome back to my channel and to November's T1D News Update. I'm actually really enjoying the response that I'm getting on these videos, but I do realise that I have to keep the stories quite short to prevent the video from being too long. So if there's a story that you'd like a deep dive into, then do let me know in the comments below. And in my last news update, some of you wanted more info on the Freestyle Libra, its new devices and its availability in the UK. And that video will be coming next week here on my channel. But before we get into today's news, be sure to give me a like, subscribe and follow for regular updates. We'll get into that diabetes cure in just a moment, so stay tuned for all of that. But first, something that many of us have and many more of us will have to deal with in our lives, diabetes burnout. It's been in the news recently, and a lady called Naomi spoke to the BBC about her experiences. She says she reached a point where she simply could not handle the physical or mental challenges of diabetes anymore. Now, there are literally hundreds of thousands of us that battle with the condition every day in the UK, but for many, there is also a significant psychological impact of learning to manage the condition. And Naomi felt she could no longer bear testing her blood sugar levels, even though she knew that she was risking her long-term health. And she became so ill that she was admitted to an eating disorder unit, even though she wasn't struggling to eat. Naomi's consultant at the Royal Bournemouth Hospital, Dr. Helen Partridge, says the psychological impact of a diabetes diagnosis should not be underestimated. The hospital is hosting one of two NHS England pilot projects looking at how to treat type 1 diabetes patients whose chronic illness affects their mental health. The pilot scheme has helped more than 70 people like Naomi, many of whom the team say would have gone undiagnosed without it. And if you've got your own experience with diabetes burnout that you'd like to share with me for an upcoming podcast episode, then send me a DM on social media. I'm at Jamie Lowe TV everywhere, or you can just email hello at jamielow.co. The NHS in England has begun providing continuous glucose monitors to pregnant women with type 1 diabetes after the initial rollout was delayed by COVID-19. It's a significant milestone on the journey towards greater access towards technology for people with type 1 diabetes and one that was made possible by JDRF Research. CGM technology has been unavailable on the NHS for most people living with type 1, including pregnant women. However, in 2017, JDRF-funded research found that CGMs significantly benefited both mother and child during pregnancy. Although this change only applies to women in England, the Scottish Health Technologies Group has recommended that the NHS in Scotland follow suit. In September 2017, the researchers behind the JDRF-funded concept with an extra T trial announced that pregnant women living with type 1 diabetes who used a continuous glucose monitor throughout their pregnancy had better blood glucose control and healthier babies. JDRF and others took this evidence from CONCEPT and submitted it to the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, which many of us know as NICE and the people who decide um, whether you get a Freestyle Libra or not, for example, which advises on the use of new medicines and technology on the NHS. In 2018, NICE subsequently agreed to update its Diabetes in Pregnancy guideline with a focus on CGMs and in 2019, the NHS England agreed to incorporate it into its long-term plan. Customers in the US can now get their insulin delivered to their door thanks to Amazon. The potential impact of the retail giant's arrival in the pharmaceutical space rippled throughout the sector immediately with the stocks of CVS Health Corp, Walgreens and Rite Aid all tumbling. The company said its online pharmacy will offer commonly prescribed medications in the US, including creams, pills, as well as medications that need to stay refrigerated like insulin. Shoppers have to set up a profile on Amazon's website and have their doctors send their prescriptions there. Most insurance is accepted, Amazon said, but Prime members who don't have insurance can also buy generic or brand name drugs from Amazon for a discount. That potential diabetes cure is on the way next, but first, the centenary of the discovery of insulin. 
One of the biggest breakthroughs in medical history was marked by people all over the world this month on World Diabetes Day. The discovery means that people with type 1 diabetes can live instead of die, and millions worldwide with the condition, including the 400,000 people here in the UK, still rely on insulin every day to stay alive. Insulin was discovered in 1921 thanks to Frederick Banting, whose November the 14th birthday is remembered each year as World Diabetes Day with 2021 and the discovery's 100 year anniversary on the horizon. The 2020 World Diabetes Day saw people online and in the press talk about their stories. It was great to see how many people got involved this year with the month long Diabetes Awareness Challenge on social media. Plus we saw celebs of type one getting involved by sharing their stories. And in the latest episode of the Author One podcast, my podcast, I spoke to author Joe Fox, who released a book on World Diabetes Day full of inspiring stories from the lives of people with type one. And if you're interested in hearing that, then just search for the All For One podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And finally today, Canadian scientists say they found a potential cure for diabetes. A team of researchers from the University of Alberta say their approach has been successful in reversing the condition in mice and now they are hoping it will translate to humans. Led by Dr. James Shapiro, the team has been able to consistently reverse diabetes in mice and is now looking to move it to human trials. The process involved using the person's own blood and turning it into insulin producing islet cells. Speaking to CTV News Edmonton, lead researcher Dr. James Shapiro said, so now we are at the point where we can reliably manufacture insulin producing cells from patients' blood who have type one or type two diabetes. And we have been doing this now for the last several months in the lab, putting these cells into diabetic mice and reversing diabetes to the point where essentially the diabetes is cured. Dr. Shapiro has been at the forefront of innovative diabetes treatment as he developed a procedure 20 years ago that involves producing new insulin making cells using islet transplants from organ donors. However, the cells would sometimes be rejected, so a powerful anti-rejection medication would be used that had significant side effects. This new stem cell process eliminates that issue. However, before this treatment can be made widely available, more research needs to be carried out. And that's the latest news in the Type 1 world. Don't forget, if you want more information on one or all of these stories, let me know in the comments box below. If you haven't already, please give this video a like and follow me on all my social media. There's a new episode of my podcast, The Awful One Podcast, out right now, so make sure you're subscribed to that. But that is all from me for now. I'm Jay Below, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.